Hey everyone, FuseMan coming at ya. As part of the Fuse VR crypto APIs, we added the ability when you're authenticating and you get the email for the magic link, that you would actually be able to open that email on your phone through Wallet Connect, which is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. And then that is going to go ahead and it'll open up MetaMask. And then you can actually see here, it's going to authenticate me to check against uh, this wallet, whether or not I actually own the wallet and verify a signature. So I'll click connect and you'll see a signature prompt that pops up that will provide a message. Go ahead, click sign. And that will then go ahead and authenticate me into my session that I want to create as far as the authentication and prove that I actually own this mobile wallet. After integrating that within the Fused VR crypto APIs, I wanted to just quickly talk about what is Wallet Connect, what is kind of the goal of that project, and how that's kind of being implemented from a technical standpoint. So let me first talk about what Wallet Connect is. Wallet Connect is, I, I, I want to say it's an open source platform, but it's really kind of more just open source code that is has been built uh, from, from kind of the ground up to enable you to connect, say, my phone to an actual decentralized application. What that means exactly is that, let's say I have a Web3 web app and I want to use my mobile device to authenticate against the browser, but I am connected to, say, my, my laptop. What I'd be able to do is actually scan a QR code that pops up to send a link to my phone and that link will then allow me to have a peer-to-peer -peer connection to that browser so that I can go ahead and from a wallet, authenticate transactions and verify verify that. So it's nice in the case where that wallet isn't necessarily tied directly to the device that you're working with. So that's how it, it it's done today. And you'll, you'll see that in a lot of decentralized applications. If I haven't already, I'll go ahead and put out an example on the screen here. And it's built as this kind of open source protocol that acts as basically a relay server to between the phone and your browser. So in that regard, there's basically a WebSocket connection that happens between the devices and that's gonna allow you to send the messages back and forth. And that's high level what the protocol does. As a project, really it's integrated with a ton of wallets that are out there and primarily around the Ethereum ecosystem, but I think there are plans to eventually move out into other popular wallets as well. And the point is that really anyone could integrate it if they so choose because it's an open source protocol. And I think the, the intent and goal behind the project is really to provide a means for, for anyone to, to leverage kind of this architecture. And I think that, that kind of generosity behind the project is incredibly uh, valuable and, and much appreciated because um, while I don't actually end up setting up a server for the Freeze VR Crypto APIs, that's all open source and possible for me to do so to connect all of the all of the tools together. So that's how uh, how that works. And thanks to deep linking technologies that happen on the mobile device, it's it's really seamless for me to basically in the Fuse VR Crypto APIs kind of decouple that and hide that behind the scenes, behind deep links and just an API. So what's happening with our APIs is that we've integrated the Wallet Connect SDK into the login function so that when I click that link, I'm going, I've already set up a Wallet Connect session that's kind of sitting there listening for any potential connection. That deep link, if it's open on an Android or iOS device, is gonna go ahead and through that deep linking process, open up the relevant wallet. That relevant wallet will then know because it was generated through deep link to connect to the wallet connect bridge. And it'll have all the parameters that are associated with that in order to authenticate, connect as you saw and communicate with our server. There's a handshake that goes on there. The server then sends the messages that need to be signed and securely that server is then able to authenticate your actual wallet. And as a game developer, you don't even have to worry about that because the authentication is handled by the Fuse VR crypto servers and it doesn't necessarily need to be integrated into your game. So it's very convenient in that regard. From a development standpoint, like I said, most of this is open sourced. It's available as a JavaScript SDK. So if 
since we were working with Node.js and Express.js, pretty straightforward to add the relevant listeners into the APIs uh, and work with that. Uh, currently, it's using version 1.7, I believe, of the SDK. And I think it's the, the project as a whole is in a pretty interesting state. Um, I actually would encourage anyone to take a look at the history. I'll leave maybe a link if I can find it again down in the description to, to read up on. Um, but that aside, currently where it's at is 1.7. It's integrated with a whole slew of actual wallets that are out there in the ecosystem. And it's trying to move into the 2.0 beta. And I think one of the challenges is because it's not backwards compatible and kind of primarily been being driven by a singular engineer, you have a, a potential issue where it's very hard to migrate everyone in a decentralized ecosystem to the latest standards. Everyone has their own sets of priorities and some people tend to get left behind. And, and it's not just from the wallet perspective, it's also from the SDK perspective. And I think that's a challenge that we're starting to see emerge, at least with this current protocol, that I think will be difficult for the project to overcome, especially if there are any other changes that might be needed in the future. And I think there are likely going to be some changes that are required because fundamentally uh, there is a slight problem with the project and because it requires a server that arguably could be a centralized server um, and needs to be from a practicality standpoint because it's handling real-time connections, there's a concern that what happens if that server goes down there and who pays for that server and who maintains that server? It's, it's not right now in a sustainable place where it would be scalable to actually have, say, this, this development team that's maintaining Wallet Connect pay for servers to support decentralized apps around the world, especially if you're talking about millions of users connecting. It's, it's, it's not cheap to, to maintain, that's for sure. So I think there's a question as a service how it could eventually scale out and grow. And there, there are likely a few iterations that are needed to, to happen. A lot of things in the Web3 space are still pretty early on. I think this project is definitely one of them, but it's solving a really important problem, which is that wallets, generally speaking, won't be tied to the given device that you're using, especially from a security standpoint. I highly recommend hardware wallets across the board. And that does make things complicated, especially because like, Mobile wallets typically don't talk to hardware wallets. You have to go through browsers. Wallet Connect doesn't support that. Although our crypto Fuse VR APIs, well, that's one thing I really wanted to support was, was the browser-based option, uh, which is how that's included. Wallet Connect is really just a tool for the mobile device, but I, I regardless still wanted to support browsers in that capacity uh, because I still think that's the best user experience when it comes to hardware wallets, which is what I believe is necessary from a security standpoint. So. I think that there's a lot of room to grow there for, for Wallet Connect as it continues to evolve and mature as a project. And and I think eventually at some point, I think ideally there, there could be a potentially a real-time decentralized model. I don't know how that would work, but if that could happen, I think that's how this project ultimately has to, to grow and succeed because otherwise uh, it'll be tricky, uh, I think, from a scalability standpoint for for such an open source project to continually iterate um, and bring everyone along with it. It's just, just kind of a, a common problem, if you will. But I, I do appreciate that there's a pretty big community behind it. And I think that's, and, and the problem that it's trying to solve is incredibly important, which is why I think there's so much interest in this space. And I think what they're doing is really good. I think there's just, there's always a commercial angle <laughs> to these types of things that could, tends to complicate things and throw things out of the window. In general, the tech is never really the the troublesome part. It's all it's always kind of how do, how do you make things viable in the long term. But that's been my my take, experimenting around with it and some of my thought processes on where it is today and where it eventually needs to go. Um, if you've tried Wallet Connect, would love to to know your experience down in the comments below. But I think that's otherwise where I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.